fending him off. Well, yes. yes, there had been resistance, but no. there is no longer. Yes, yes. yes. I'm sure, Gates don't do it like that, you know. Oh, I'm well, afraid I, I wouldn't know that. That's where my expertise ends. <laughs> In the Greek world, the ideal of love was something quite separate from sex. At the same time, sex was nothing to be ashamed of, and the body was something to be celebrated. The Jews, on the other hand, had started to believe that it's right and natural to be ashamed of your naked flesh. And eventually, of course, the classical and Jewish worlds come together. Hello, Christianity. The history of sex and love was about to be totally transformed. The pagan world saw the business of fertility, sex, and the renewal of life as the vital connection between the gods and man. Christianity, in the early days, presented itself as anti-paganism. So being anti-fertility and anti-sex wasn't an accident. It was fundamental to Christianity. This is the Greek city of Corinth. It's a quiet place now, but a couple of thousand years ago, when it was part of the Roman Empire, it had quite a reputation. When Greeks referred to a prostitute, they called her a Corinthian girl. And one expression for a pimp was a Corinthian businessman. She's a Corinthian meant, oh, she'll go with anyone. Up on that mountain was a temple to Aphrodite. And here, in this lively port city, Aphrodite's temple was dedicated to the pursuit of sexual love. It was said that there were a thousand temple prostitutes hard at work here. After the crucifixion, Jesus' disciple Paul set out to teach the world the importance of what he understood to be Christ's message. And this is what he wrote in his letter to the Corinthians. Neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor the effeminate, nor homosexuals shall inherit the kingdom of God. This is what St. Paul told the people here in Corinth. In the history of sex and love, St. Paul holds a very special place. He was both a Jew and a Roman citizen who grew up in a Greek city. He set out to interpret the message of the Jew Jesus to the Romano-Greek world. And a large part of that message, as he interpreted it, was that unmarried sex was not only shameful, but a sin. To the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is well for them to remain single, as I do. But if they have no self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. By putting control of sex at the heart of his religious message, Paul wrapped his own particular views on sexual behavior in the moral authority of the creator of the universe. And he made it stick. Where's the temple of Aphrodite now? There's hardly a stone of it left. Thank you, St. Paul.